Hi everyone, uh, I'm very happy to be here today and talk to you about the Schönkunsthalle Frankfurt and how we develop and implement um, our um, stories uh, from the perspective of an exhibition hall. So I hope that will contribute uh, a slightly different uh, approach uh, and some more input, even though we probably have a lot of cross-references and experience that we share, but our specific case uh, deals with uh, specific uh, challenges, but also uh, liberties, um, which hope, uh, I hope uh, will inspire you. So I uh, will talk about some of our digital products um, in just a minute and um, would like to introduce you a little bit more to our uh, institution, uh, in case you were wondering, and since the name already had uh, uh, was pronounced not uh, fully, um, so we are the Schönkunsthalle Frankfurt, um, but we, we say basically in short most of the time just the Schön. And uh, in case you were wondering, um, uh, we are situated in the city of, uh, in, the, in the center of Frankfurt, built at the edge uh, of the historical path that uh, emperors ceremoniously would pass through uh, in the Middle Ages. And along this path, you would have um, uh, little, little stores for sausages, so the Frankfurt sausage. Uh, uh, and these stores were called Schrinnen, and that's why we are still uh, called uh, Schön as a historic note to uh, to that uh, historic fact, but the old city was um, destroyed in the Second World War, so um, this is a completely uh, new area and a completely new building. Um, we uh, um, were founded in 1986, uh, so we are a rather young institution and have presented more than 200 um, exhibitions on about 2,000 uh, square meters and have more than uh, 8 million visitors so far. So we are not a museum, but an exhibition uh, hall, um, so we do not have a collection. Um, our program ranges from the 19th uh, to 20th century art, but we also do present uh, contemporary artists and uh, survey shows. Uh, we do focus on art, historical and cultural themes, um, discourses and trends and arts from a contemporary uh, perspective. Uh, and just to give you a few examples, um, such themes uh, could be, for example, uh, the pioneering artistic positions from the serialistic object art that you can see here, or presenting for the very first time uh, female artists from the uh, Impressionist uh, movement, or um, also here um, we uh, had the show called Esprit Montmartre, which presented artists from Paris of uh, the turn of the century, but from a new perspective and beyond the cliches which uh, most of us um, um, are acquainted with. Or uh, German pop, uh, another exhibition where we um, elaborated uh, on the specificality of the um, pop art in Germany and what that means. Um, but we also um, present, so let's say, we focus on always giving like a social or cultural or a political um, aspect and a, uh, on a theme that uh, might seem familiar or an artist that you might think you already know entirely. Um, so uh, to push um, debates, we for example had, um, that's quite a while ago, an exhibition called Shopping um, that uh, um, was discussing a century of art and consumer culture, uh, and we actually brought uh, a supermarket into the Schoen, um, or Street Art Brazil, where we left the building and went into the city and actually took over the city um, with um, street artists from Brazil, um, or just another example for a theme exhibition, um, um, that was the exhibition Self, uh, that uh, gave a new perspective on uh, self-portraiture in contemporary art. But we also do put together large-scale um, solo exhibitions um, by Edward Munch, um, Miro, um, or Magritte. Uh, it's an exhibition we just um, finished, and it's our second uh, most successful exhibition we had in the history with uh, 190,000 um, visitors, uh, and it was uh, put together in collaboration with the Centre Pompidou in Paris. Um, and also here we would not show just a Magritte exhibition, but we would focus on his idea of the painter as the philosopher. So we would talk about Magritte um, as a, 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 and philosophy uh, of the time. Or Courbet or um, Philip Gaston. 
um, but we also do put together um, solo shows um, with living artists uh, and in uh, very close collaboration with, with them. So we were uh, showing a, um, a big show with Jeff Koons, but focused here also on the lesser known um, uh, paintings of Jeff Koons, or we um, presented a retrospective on um, Yoko Ono's 80th uh, anniversary, uh, which then traveled on to the Guggenheim uh, Bilbao as well or very new build, uh, paintings by um, Daniel Richter or Tobias Rehberger, he took over the entire space and basically um, changed the exhibition space into a walkable um, sculpture. Um, or Doug Etkin um, as a representative of um, video art. Um, I should emphasize at this point that we curate and develop almost all our shows um, ourselves and others, uh, genuine content producers, and um, um, doing that, uh, thanks to these guys, um, we have five permanent uh, curators who are constantly working on um, developing, putting together new shows um, for the Schoen. So we have like two to three exhibitions um, at once, uh, and they're changing like every three to four months. So in average, I would say we have like eight, um, it shows a year, sometimes more, um, so it's quite a, as you can imagine, quite a pace, but also a tremendous potential um, and, and constant influx of content we can work with. Um, as a public art institution without a collection, we understand it uh, as our responsibility to develop well-founded suggestions from a contemporary perspective that then promotes a discourse uh, that can be taken up again by museums. Uh, and in many cases, our shows go on and travel or are in collaboration with uh, partner museums and institutions. So let's just give a quick shout out to our um, mission statement. The Schoen sees itself as a place uh, for making discoveries and as a seismograph for explosive developments in the visual arts. At the same time, it articulates combative opinions, sparks debates, and provides space for a lively exchange on the relevance of art for our society. Now, how does that translate to our digital um, uh, strategy? Let's um, break that down just um, really quickly. Uh, we want to push uh, debates uh, and discussions. Um, we want to take on the role as a trendsetter or a best practice example. Um, uh, uh, we want to engage new audiences and reach a, a rather uh, broad audience. Um, we want to generate digital visitors, so not just physical visitors, but uh, digital visitors, and be a place of discovery. And also here, that can be online or uh, on site. Um, we believe that uh, user experience, and it is a broad term, I'm aware of that, is um, crucial to succeeding in realizing our goals and our philosophy and um, understanding of our visitors' users' experience derives from the idea that the Schoen fits to everyone everywhere. So no matter what age, what social fit, um, what time, location, or device they're using. So. We strive to offer our visitors an original sensory exhibition experience and opportunities for active involvement uh, before, during, uh, and after their visit. Um, at this point, maybe let me tell you a bit more or just very briefly about our audience. Um, so our exhibitions try to consciously reach out to a broad audience um, while attempting uh, new points of views at the same time, and um, we do uh, um, intend to be uh, the most popular institution in, in the area, in our region. But um, visitor numbers um, and profile vary largely from exhibition to exhibition. You can imagine if you have a show like Magritte, but then you have an exhibition like uh, The Self, uh, about self-portraiture from a contemporary perspective. Um, that's quite a, quite a different audience you, you want to talk to. Uh, but in average, we can say that more than 60% of our visitors are female, and the biggest visitor group is about 50 years old. And um, the most recent figure is, uh, shows that 67% of our um, visitors uh, come to the Schoen more than once a year. Um, in terms of personas, just because we uh, hinted at it this morning, we uh, came up with five personas when talking about uh, user experience and talking about our digital um, campaigns. And uh, it is the traditional museum goer for sure. It is also families and educators, or, um, but it's also um, the Generation Y, and um, as well as bloggers and social um, um, publishers. Now. 
the Schirn has been uh, one of the very first institutions in Germany to take on social media and has since built one of the most um, uh, successful footprints on a national scale of um, about 140,000 uh, followers. Uh, from the beginning, our strategy has been to speak in an entertaining uh, way, and we try to make uh, our uh, institution very accessible with everything uh, we plan out. Now, maybe let's talk about some specifics and cases. Um, uh, we'll not so much present just uh, one specific uh, program, but rather give you a little bit of an overview uh, of the many activities we are doing um, um, to improve user experience and to widen it. So two years ago, we relaunched our website, which we wanted to base on a um, pioneering new concept to offer visitors a real um, digital companion. So as we said before, it's very important for us to think it uh, uh, as a visitor experience from uh, before, during, and after um, their visit. So we see it as a full circle, and uh, keeping in mind that uh, a lot of our visitors are returning visitors, um, um, that's even more important. Um, in doing so, we wanted to respond in an innovative way to the demanding and changing user behavior of our visitors um, that everybody uh, expects today, uh, accessibility, convenience, uh, you want to get information fast. Um, so we were looking for things um, um, to, to set up our website a little bit differently and to find a technical setup that enables um, different um, displays of uh, contents depending on whether, um, whether time, like whether you're um, going on our website on the weekend where you probably would have more time maybe to plan your visit or whether um, you want to read on our Schoen magazine. So we would um, um, have these contents, for example, higher up uh, on the web page on a weekend. Um, or uh, time also meaning um, if you're close by uh, and you might want to want to go see uh, a show or uh, you can um, check um, if uh, in how many minutes so you would have a countdown and how many minutes you would have the next um, guided tour on uh, or it's also um, uh, um, differentiated in terms of device you're using obviously but also in, in terms of um, uh, location so are you in the Schirn are you using the Wi-Fi or are you um, maybe abroad and uh, have if not the necessity um, to plan your visit. Um, so regardless um, uh, of uh, the situation, so, uh, the context, we wanted to give each uh, one a different kind of information that we can, um, so we can ideally react to that um, with our website. Uh, here you just see a quick uh, image of uh, what's, that we also include um, social media, in that case, uh, our Instagram feed, uh, the hashtag Shern on the website, which is uh, ever-changing. So we also thought, what can we do, uh, what can we give our visitors before they even come uh, to the exhibition, uh, and what can we do to make uh, their experience um, even better? And this is what we came up with, and some of you might have uh, joined my colleague uh, in her workshop and know already a little bit about it. Um, for the others, I just give um, uh, a brief introduction. Um, the digital is a free digital educational format, um, whether at home, in a cafe, or on your journey to the Schirn. It's basically um, a one-pager um, that allows you to learn more about the background and the core topics um, of the exhibition subject. Um, it's responsive and available in German and English, so you guys can actually check it out. <laughs> and it links together multimedia, that's just an example from our latest um, digital. Um, it links together multimedia contents, um, so you would have sound, um, you would have uh, videos, um, texts of course, images, um, but they would be put together in an engagingly narrative um, uh, way so that you really can um, enjoy it, just like um, um, getting some information beforehand, or you can really go into depth by um, opening um, certain deeper layers into the, into the subject matter. Um, we did have, um, just to give you a number maybe because I think that's quite interesting as well, um, we did have now with the Madrid exhibition which is closed, we had like 40, 60,000 uh, visits so that marks quite uh, basically a, 
a quarter of the exhibition uh, visitors who used it um, to, to prepare or to uh, go deeper into the subject or even after their visit. Um, so we try to push space and time related boundaries and continuously try to extend the exhi exhibition space in the web. And we further provide um, uh, this, uh, that's um, a Wi-Fi special. So we do offer a free Wi-Fi for everybody and we thought again, what can we offer um, our visitors when they're on site in the, in the show? And we came up with this um, very um, uh, playful um, um, way of um, introducing just five works per exhibition. Um, it's easily accessible, you don't have to log in, it's not an app, it's again just uh, part of the website. Uh, so you either uh, you know, will be referred to the, to the site when you log in or you just put in um, um, this uh, address and you can then just explore uh, in a very playful way um, uh, and very associative way um, some of the works. So here we, for example, ask people to uh, insert a new title and the users would then also see what other people's contribution uh, were, which uh, we know they really enjoy also seeing like what, what other users um, uh, are, what's their creative thoughts, um, or just, um, yeah, put like even something entertaining uh, like this, um, just to um, address uh, an audience which maybe will not um, rent the audio guide or will not uh, go in depth reading the, the long uh, texts on the wall. So it is really uh, meant to be an alternative to that. Um, and 20% of our visitors use it, which um, is quite nice to see. Uh, and again, for Magritte, it was about uh, 29,000 people who um, tried at least some of these five uh, stages. And um, to give you just one more example how we are using the website um, to um, enhance user experience, um, we just launched a 360-degree open access project um, that uh, uh, deals uh, with our rotunda. The rotunda is uh, an open space in front of the Schoen, so it's, uh, it's an exhibition space, but it's also public space. And two to three years, uh, times a year, we invite artists to change that public space into a walkable sculpture. And just to give you some examples, that's Heather Philipson or uh, um, Schulz or Barbara Kruger, uh, Doug Etkin, yeah. And again, you can just um, like um, enter the, the web address and can actually re-experience uh, past exhibitions. And it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of a uh, augmented reality experience, even though it's, um, it's very simple. It's basically just 360 degree, degree uh, footage, uh, meaning either film, if you want to have sound with it, or just uh, photos and you can then just basically turn around in 360 degrees in that special room. So we really thought, I mean, if we do 360 degrees, then we have to do it in that room and not uh, on Facebook. But of course you can also uh, post the material on Facebook or on the website or on YouTube. Um, now, the Schoen has um, been active in social web uh, for quite some time and we do have um, our own online magazine and uh, I believe that uh, it really has some uh, extraordinary um, opportunities for us since we do not have a collection so we cannot really develop uh, an online database, we cannot um, you know, work very extensively and for a long time on uh, uh, one artwork which we have in our collection, we really have to come up with something else. Um, and so very early on we decided to go um, and create um, a magazine, um, and it's not, uh, it's not a blog, it goes uh, way beyond that. So our, uh, it would have, of course, uh, subjects that are related to, to um, our exhibitions. So we would have artist interviews, we would have um, articles from our curators when they're traveling, while they're setting up their show, um, or even when they go to, um, to other exhibitions even, they write also and recommend other exhibitions, not just so it's not just uh, about the Schoen. And we also would have uh, authors who are um, uh, basically can pick up any subject they want. Um, if, it's, if we think it's interesting, uh, uh, we put it up there. And um, 
It's available in English, even though we do not translate all the articles, but you find quite a lot in, in English on there, so you can check uh, that out as well. Um, we designed it um, together with uh, our uh, redesign of a uh, relaunch of the website, but we decided, for example, to go with a different typography um, just to give the reader a more magazine feeling and also to you know, allow him to spend more time on the website reading. Um, just to give you some... <laughs> Some ideas. We do have podcasts also. They are unfortunately only available in German so far. Um, and we do have um, a special comment uh, field, so you can go on the website and uh, leave your comment right next to the paragraph. The site would shift to the site, and then you can leave your comment, and it would appear there. Or we also have an easy share and comment function, so you just mark the, the, the paragraph or uh, the, the, the sentence you like, and you can share it uh, directly on social media. Um, we also do work with bloggers, uh, so that was just an example when we were um, doing our Esprimo Matre exhibition, um, we found out that Toulouse-Lautrec apparently had a fabulous uh, cookbook, um, uh, and we invited um, food bloggers, for example, to then cook these recipes from his cookbook and uh, post it online with the recipe, but also with tips maybe on you know how to use not a wooden oven, but maybe something more contemporary um, to make the recipe work. And um, since half a year, we are also using uh, the WhatsApp service um, which um, has already a thousand um, subscribers and it's a very easy way to basically be wherever your audience is, wherever um, uh, your readers are and it only made sense to us to go further this way as a matter of service, uh, of course, but also because already now 40% of our readers um, do read the magazine uh, on their smartphone. Um, yeah, maybe just to give you some numbers, um, we have 600, about 600,000 uh, visitors um, uh, go on the website each year, and 30% um, of the readers um, are not German, so have an uh, international background. Um, our main channel of distribution, however, is um, Facebook. We also do uh, use Twitter, um, but the focus, of course, is Facebook because we almost have 100,000 fans, so, um, of course, with a, a, a higher potential reach, uh, depending on your budget. So we use uh, Facebook really um, as, a, as a news channel. We would also post uh, videos um, um, that uh, we produce for each exhibition, um, but also do um, curator-led curator um, live tours, um, which people seem to really uh, in, enjoy as well. Um, but we do all sorts of uh, things, like we would just post pictures from the openings and um, bring some press pics we thought people m uh, might, uh, might enjoy. Or, um, unfortunately, it's in German, the English is a little bit smaller. Uh, we would pick um, uh, uh, notes from our visitors from the guest book, uh, which are uh, funny or provocative, or um, yeah, and uh, so we would do that uh, every now and then, and uh, people really think it's funny, and uh, yeah, we we we, we do too. <laughs> um, uh, we reach all age groups via Facebook, so um, this is really our main channel, and we can also see that uh, interactions are really fairly um, distributed among all age groups. So we are pretty safe uh, on that channel. Um, but let's take a look at another channel, Instagram. Um, our main topics of posting would be, of course, events and upcoming shows, running shows, um, or artists. But we do regram a lot of the content um, by our visitors um, to make it uh, um, accessible, but also just uh, fair enough to have a lot of uh, content that we um, uh, can produce without using too many of our own resources. So people really do share a lot, and uh, they're very grateful for sharing whenever we share it. Um, so I think it's an easy and a great way to generate content, but at the same time also really have build a relationship with your audience. So we would do that, for example, also with specific hashtags. We would ask them to use, for example, the hashtag Schön Architecture, um, and people would use that uh, when uh, they come to visit, or um, the hashtag Schön Design, where they would um, um, uh, post posters they see in the city or posters they bought at the shop and now are in their living room or invitation cards or tickets. Um, 
Another um, income of uh, content is, of course, our own staff. So we would uh, have our curators um, post from uh, the exhibition while setting it up, or even take uh, the account to uh, here, for example, to the Venice Biennale and um, just uh, show what, what, what uh, their favorite works are. Um, or we would give it to artists. Uh, this is uh, Florian Meisenberg uh, during their uh, setup of uh, an installation. Um, but we also do uh, other uh, um, Instagram cooperations. So we would, for example, work together with magazines who are partners for a specific exhibition. But here we would actually take over their accounts um, and post on their sites, which uh, gives us, of course, a new uh, a reach, a new audience. But uh, for them, it's also usually very attractive, especially if we do have um, uh, an artist in, uh, in the house collaborating with us. Um, we also do insta swaps with um, uh, museums. So as I said, like it's re we are really um, depending on loans from other institutions and uh, on corporations with other institutions. And we wanted to show that also to our audience. Um, and so we approached um, a couple of museums uh, recently um, that we um, collaborate with. And so we did here our first insta swap with the Louisiana Museum because uh, they gave us some amazing uh, Giacometti works for our exhibition. Uh, Giacometti Naumann, um, and we would s switch actually. So they would uh, get our channel and uh, we would get theirs. And I, uh, people loved it on both sides uh, so as well uh, in Frankfurt as in Copenhagen, just to get a glimpse of uh, another institution. Of course, it's great advertisement for the channel, but it also really is great storytelling because you can uh, say more in depth about an artist, but also about how complicated it is to bring loans to, to another place, etc. And we did that again with the Leopold Museum in Vienna. Um, it worked just as well, and uh, we, we're certainly going to uh, um, keep doing that. Now, another thing we do on Instagram, uh, recently we um, approached a lot of uh, Instagrammers that we thought would fit to a specific subject. So. For Magritte, um, we um, talked to um, some Instagrammers that we thought already had kind of a certain look and feel that would uh, fit to, um, to Magritte and invited them to post images under a certain hashtag. We would then share these images. They would share it, of course, on their channel. We would also do an interview with them, what inspired them, and post it on, uh, on the magazine. Um, so just to give you some more examples. We would also then ask um, uh, the audience to participate. They could use the hashtag ImagineMagrit and come up with uh, their own creative works. Uh, and we also, maybe just to mention, we also would do um, a uh, share and meet up every, for every opening, for every exhibition, so that really every exhibition is also involved uh, on our social media channels. Um, so let's um, take a look at uh, uh, maybe another channel. Um, maybe first, uh, let me finish up with Instagram. So it is, uh, I mean, we do have a rather successful um, number in, uh, in followers, but of course, you cannot really compare it to some of the uh, global players, uh, especially in the Anglo-Saxon um, uh, area. Um, but um, I do believe that's a really uh, good investment for visitor engagement, uh, for having a conversation, but also um, just to um, uh, further push uh, our image as a vivid uh, um, and content producing uh, institution. Um, but because it has a lot of creative power um, uh, to, to, to be put in, we, we, and we have some other channels like Snapchat, uh, where we thought, well, we do not yet have that reach, and can we uh, invest really in another channel? Um, so we had to come up with another idea, and we uh, thought we would um, uh, give the channel simply to our audience. So we asked um, uh, snap, snap us, um, but we would publish it on all our channels. Um, we would ask them um, to participate, uh, and we would call them snap reporters. Uh, so they would come to an exhibition, to an opening, um, or any other event they suggest. Um, and we would encourage them to really use their own style and um, speak in their own language and be, we let them basically uh, run completely free. So this is Noah, for example, he's 11 years old and he was snapping live from um, our kids' art night. 
or uh, Felix, he's 20 years old and he was uh, um, reporting from our Giacometti Naumann exhibition. Um, just before I sum up, I just want to give you a little outlook on what we are working on right now. So uh, in the summer we have an exhibition called Peace, um, where we present contemporary artists um, that have um, that, um, have an idea on uh, a certain subject as we usually do, but in this case we really want to discuss um, the, the broad subject, the broad theme uh, of peace. Um, so we decided to um, create a website um, where they can have videos uh, and um, texts and all the information on events. Um, it's, a, it's a collaboration of all the artists. So um, we do ask the question, how does peace actually work? And we will have um, uh, a so-called peace wall where people can use uh, um, um, the platform to uh, leave their own ideas or thoughts um, on the question and um, what peace uh, really means. Um, people, of course, then com can comment on that. They can also share it on Facebook. So it really, we, we hope it will really uh, spark a debate because um, it, it's not always easy to, to really spark a debate. Um, um, so we please check it out. We will have it online at the end of the month. We will also have um, a position in uh, on the location. So we will try to really engage visitors who leave the exhibition but of course also people who are just online or who uh, have an opinion on the subject. Um, so the website is online now, but the, this uh, specific part um, will, be opening, uh, uh, will, will be online with the opening at the end of um, the month. Um, so trying uh, new ways of engaging online, just to sum up, um, with a younger and more diverse audience and discovering ways of becoming facilitators of online conversation and rethinking ideas about participation. Um, we believe uh, that it is uh, rewarding by improving really like different types of uh, experiences and really just experiment with it. So whether it is social media um, to push real-time uh, participation or whether it is um, augmented reality or uh, that adds uh, additional value uh, and information, or whether it is um, um, the exhibition, the physical experience on site. Um, so yeah, that's it, and follow us. <laughs>